Hi there, I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video I'd like to answer a question from one of my viewers. She wanted to know, how do I use two monitors at the same time when I'm doing digital painting? And this is my studio workspace here. You can see I have quite a few monitors. I have a regular computer monitor, an HD TV, and I have a Cintiq 24 HD. So I have lots of different screen options. So the first and most important thing is you need to make sure that you have a video card which supports more than one monitor. And you can look on the back of your computer at your video card and see if it has more than one input. This is my old video card which is an ATI video card and it has VGA which is generally used to hook up monitors and TVs. It has HDMI which works for most newer TVs and it has DVI which works for uh, computer monitors like this one here. If for some reason you need to switch the DVI to VGA, which is pretty common. There's also these adapters, which usually come with the video card. And then it just converts the DVI to VGA. They also have ones that do the opposite. So I have my box for my new video card here. And my new video card is an NVIDIA video card. It's a little bit better. What you're gonna want is you're gonna want a video card that has at least two outputs. And you'll want to make sure that you can use the uh, two or three outputs simultaneously because in this particular card here, I could only use two of these outputs. I couldn't use all three. So that's part of the reason why I upgraded to the new one so that I can use all three outputs. You'll also want to make sure that it will work in your computer. Typically the video cards now are PCIe. Uh, you'll also want to have one gigabyte of RAM at least and make sure that it's compatible with DirectX 11, then you'll know that you're getting a newer card. So what you'll want to do is, once you have your video card installed, connect all of your monitors and screens to your video card, and then turn your computer on, and it may work automatically, it may not, to detect your monitors. You might have to install or update what are called the drivers, and that's the software that makes your video card work. So what you'll want to do is you will want to go to the manufacturer's website for your video card. So this particular video card that I'm using now is a GeForce video card by NVIDIA. So I'm on the GeForce.com website and I can look up the specific model and get the drivers. I could also go to MSI's website because they actually made the card and get the drivers there as well. And once you have your software installed and updated, what you'll want to do to make the other monitor work is you'll want to go to your control panel and in your control panel you'll want to look for display. We'll go to display and then we will go to adjust resolution and on the adjust resolution page probably what you'll see at first if you didn't have multiple monitors already you'll have this multiple displays and it will say uh, duplicate desktop. You'll want to change it to extend desktop and then you'll want to go ahead and drag these uh, representations of your screen around in the appropriate place. So this screen number one, if I click on it, this is my TV. You can see it's up at the top and then the screen three, this is the smaller monitor. You can see it's right next to that monitor. So that way if I move my mouse from this screen to that screen, it follows it and then of course my second monitor is my Cintiq so if I prop this up so you can see it a little bit better if I move my mouse from the top here down it goes to my Cintiq so it's important that these are set up the way that they are uh, set up properly otherwise you're not, you're not going to be able to figure out where your mouse is it does get a little confusing like I have to move my mouse up to this screen and then over to that one if I want to go to that one so that does get a little tricky You'll also want to make sure that your resolution is set properly. So this TV is typically uh, works best at 1920 by 1080. That's just the standard resolution for a, an HD TV. My Cintiq has a, a specific resolution that it's set to, and my monitor works best at 1440 by 900. So I have it set to that. Now you might get some other options that might uh, give you some more control if you look under the NVIDIA or the ATI control panel and those are available just by right-clicking on your desktop 
and there should be a little menu that comes up or you can look in your control panel for instance if I go to my control panel here I have an NVIDIA control panel application which gives me some options for instance I have more control over the resolution and I can do some different things to adjust the desktop size and position if for some reason the screen isn't fitting properly on the TV or on the monitor you can scoot it around and make it bigger and smaller and so on so this gives you a little bit more control now let's take a look at mapping the pen because if you're going to be wanting to draw and paint you'll want to make sure that your tablet works on a specific screen it doesn't work so well if you have it work on both screens because your hand gets kind of thrown off so mine works with my Cintiq but it won't go over to any of the other screens it's kind of locked into the Cintiq here so the way that I did that is I went to the control panel again and I went to Wacom tablet properties or the control panel for your tablet and then what you want to do is you want to look for mapping if you're not using a Cintiq and that will give you an option to set the specific screen uh, to match your tablet or if you're using a Cintiq then you'll want to go to functions and look under display toggle make sure it's set to pen display to other displays and and you want to look under express keys and make sure that one of your express keys is set to display toggle on the Cintiq so that happens to be this key here and right now my pen's working on this screen if I hit that express key it toggles and now my I could still move it on my tablet but it's controlling it on the other screen if I press display toggle again then now it's gone over to that monitor over there and you can see that there's my cursor and if I hit display toggle again comes back over here. So that's how you do it on a Cintiq. On any other kind of tablet, generally you're going to have a control panel where, again, there's going to be a mapping option where you have to set the specific monitor for the tablet. Now you'll notice I am using my mouse and my pen simultaneously, and there are some things that are a lot easier to do with the mouse rather than the pen. So I really only use the pen for drawing, and everything else I just use the mouse kind of keep the pen in my hand and use the mouse here. I have this specific trackball mouse. I like this a lot better than the regular kind of mouse because the regular kind of mouse you have to move around a lot. This one takes up less space because it's a trackball, but not everybody likes the trackball. The index finger trackball I find works better. I couldn't get used to the thumb trackball. So having said that, if your tablet is mapped to a specific screen if you want to get to the other screens you won't be able to do it with your pen you'll have to use the mouse to click on stuff that's on the other screens that aren't connected to your tablet now let's take a look at using Corel Painter along with the multiple monitors so I'm going to move my Cintiq here and I can use this to my advantage because I could go ahead and start drawing here on my Cintiq and I could have a reference image over here that I'm looking at or a reference image up here and then that way I don't have to keep it on screen here I can just maximize my screen space so it's really good for reference images as you can see I've been using the extra displays to store my palettes and things and windows I have my script that I'm following here on this screen uh, I keep a lot of different icons on the screen so that everything doesn't get uh, too cluttered on one screen, I kind of spread them out. There's a lot of things that you can use these two screens for. Uh, for instance, After Effects here, if I open this, then you can see that on one screen I have my timeline, which does take up a lot of space, and then I have a preview of my video and some other palettes. Everything's kind of spread out, that way I don't have to have it all clustered together on one screen that makes it harder to work with. So. There are a lot of applications where you can use this to your advantage and spread out your palettes everywhere. Now in Painter, that's not such a good idea. You're probably going to want to just keep everything on one screen because if you move these palettes off to the other screen, you'll have to use your mouse to get to them. You won't be able to get to them with your pen. And generally in Painter, you're going to be spending a lot of time using your pen, so it's better if you can avoid having to go off to the other screens. So there's a lot of things that you can use these multiple monitors for. It's really pretty easy to set up, you know, again, like I said, you just have to have a video card that supports multiple monitors, connect the monitors or the TV to it, and make sure that the drivers are all up to date, 
set the screens up the way you want and you'll be good to go. So I hope this answered your question on how to use multiple monitors for creating digital artwork with Corel Painter. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it on YouTube, and that'll make it easier for other artists out there to find this information. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.